I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're doing a little bit of black box log analysis, and in honor of that, we're going old school. I'm just doing this with a desktop recording. There's no camera, so you can see my beautiful face. You're just going to see my beautiful black box logs instead. And this black box log was sent to me uh, by somebody who had a problem. I was originally going to do this as a can you troubleshoot, but ultimately, the problem turned out to be related to a new feature in Betaflight 3.3. So instead, I'm going to release this as part of my Betaflight 3.3 uh, series. The complaint that the person had was this. Whenever I do a backflip on my quad, it continues to do like two or three more backflips, and then it, it recovers. And my first thought was that this was a desyncing motor. But when we look at the actual thing that's happening, the quad doesn't just spin wildly. Like if you desync one motor, then the quad is going to tip towards the one motor that desynced and it's going to kind of spin diagonally and just get totally out of control. It really was very strange that he would do a backflip and the quad would just go whoosh, whoosh, do like two, maybe three more backflips very neatly. And then it would just recover and it would recover every single time. Uh, as long as he had enough altitude that he didn't crash. Unlike the sort of roll of death that you may have experienced where once the quad starts spinning, it just never recovers. And the first thing I, I look whenever you've got a spin of death or any kind of like the quad falls out of the air is I go and I look at the motors. And what I expect to see is that the motors, at the moment that the problem happens, the motors will go, one of the motors will go to 100%. And the reason for that is, the analogy that I like to make is, that it's like if you uh, if you're driving on the highway and your brakes failed. Hold on, I'm looking for the problem here. If you're driving on the highway and your brakes failed, then uh, what would the black box show that your foot was doing to the brake pedal at the moment that you crashed? The brakes would not be stopping the car, but you would be full. You would be standing on the brake, and that's what it means when you get a desync and you see that a motor goes to full. The motor that desyncs will not make any thrust, and the flight controller will say, "Give me all the thrust you can." The motor signal will go to full. Remember that. The motor signals show what the flight controller is asking the motor to do, not what the motor is actually doing. If you have uh, ESC telemetry and the motors are reporting RPM via ESC telemetry, that is what the motor is actually doing. So I found the issue, the time when his quad flips. Here we go. Here it is. And I saw something very, very strange. What do the motors do at the moment that the quad flips out? The motors go to zero. And not just one motor, but all of the motors completely shut down. Okay, we can see here, motor one, these motors are at 0%. And again, remember, this is what the flight controller is telling the motors to do. It's not like something mechanical went wrong and the motors stopped and we're seeing that reflected here. The flight controller said to the motors, hey guys, you, you, you take it easy, take a break, don't do anything. This was really freaking confusing me. So the next thing I did is I went and I looked at the PIDs. I looked at the PIDs and I said, what are the PIDs doing at the moment that this happens? And I became even more confused. Now, interpreting the PIDs, you can go check out my Black Box 101 playlist, uh, for a link in the video description for more information on interpreting like what the PIDs are doing. But here, the PIDs on the roll axis, which is what we're looking at now, P, I, and D, they are all zero. Zero. And in fact, if we look at, that's the roll axis, here we are on the pitch axis, zero. And on the yaw axis, zero. The PIDs completely zero out. Now I was really confused because the, the PID, the magnitude of the PIDs is how hard the flight controller is trying to push the quadcopter to do what it needs to be doing. And the whole time you're flying, from the moment you arm the quad and begin to raise the throttle, the PIDs are working, right? The PIDs are never just sitting at zero. If the PIDs are at zero, it means the, the flight controller is not trying to affect the quad's behavior at all. And that the pins will go to zero and the motors shut down. It's like the flight controller just take, took a nap. And in fact, that's true. That is what happened. But the question is why? And the answer goes back to a new feature in Betaflight 3.3 called Yaw Spin to the Moon Prevention. So there's a failure mode that can happen uh, 
when the quadcopter spins too fast for the gyro. The gyro chip that we use is capable of reporting up to 2000 degrees per second of rotation. Divide that by 360. That's how many spins per second you would need to do if you just want to, 2000 degrees per second probably doesn't make a lot of intuitive sense to most of us. Uh, and when that number is exceeded, the gyro driver actually has a bug in it that causes the data to become corrupted. It's called a rollover. And basically what happens is that if you're spinning to the left, the gyro tells the flight controller that it's spinning to the right, at which point the flight controller says, spin to the left harder, because it wants to stop the spin to the right. And since it's, all, it's actually spinning to the left, it just makes the problem worse and you get this feedback loop. If, if you've ever had your quadcopter just start spinning crazily on the yaw axis and no matter what you did, lower the throttle, nothing stopped it and you just had to disarm, that was a yaw spin to the moon and it might have been caused by this gyro bug. By the way, I want to be clear that this bug is in the gyro chip itself. This is not a beta flight bug. It's, a, it's an InvenSense bug and the beta flight guys have built in something to fix it. So if we look at the gyro here at the moment before the problem happens, in fact, let's get the gyro and let's get the motors up at the same time. So here is the moment where all four of the motors go to zero. Let's look at the uh, pitch gyro at the moment that that happens. And what is the value of the pitch gyro? 1171 degrees per second. And as we go, 1620, 1729. Oh, I went too far. How do I do? There we go. 1756, 80, 1800, 1905. I'm looking right here. 1905, 1931, 1952, 1968, 1980, 1988, 1993. Oh my God. It's the, it's the mid nineties. I, I want to be in a boy band. 1996. Boom. At that moment, Betaflight says the gyro is about to have this overflow bug and we are about to have a yaw spin to the moon. And what Betaflight decides to do at that moment is shut down the PID loop. The incoming data is about to be garbage. And the only thing we can do when we're getting garbage data is just cover our eyes and cover our ears and go la, 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 until the problem goes away. And the good news is that when Betaflight shuts down the motors, air resistance and normal physics will cause the gyro rate to drop down below 2000 degrees per second. And as we look, we can see 1960, 1460, eventually it comes down and after an appropriate safety window, Betaflight kicks in the PIDs again. Now you may be saying, but Joshua, I like to have really high rates. I want to do super duper fast flip floppies in the air and I don't want this to happen. And I've never had a yaw spin to the moon anyway. So come on, give me a break. And the good news is that you can tweak this setting. So if I go to the command line and type, I believe it's YSTTM, yaw spin to the moon. No. Whoa, am I going to have to do a dump? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There we go. That's it. It's gyro overflow detect. And the values allowed are off, yaw only, or all. So the way this works is on all, the gyro overflow protection will kick in when you exceed 2000 degrees per second on any axis. If you set it to yaw, then it'll only work on the yaw axis. And the reason for that is that yaw spin to the moon usually happens on the yaw axis. You clip a gate or something and the quad spins rapidly. So the quad also has more authority on the pitch and roll axis. So anyway, it's, it's less likely to exceed that rate unintentionally on the pitch and roll axis. So you can set it on the yaw axis only, and then you'll still be able to do super fast flips and rolls above 2000 degrees per second, or you can just turn it off. And then you'll have no yaw spin to the moon protection. But if you never had that problem anyway, maybe it doesn't matter for you. Now, most of you guys are not going to experience this issue because most people aren't running rates high enough to exceed 2000 degrees per second. Um, bear in mind, though, that even if your rates are below 2000 degrees per second here in the configurator, here in the configurator, like if you look right here in the receiver tab and you say, oh, 
no, the PID tuning tab, sorry. And you say, my rate is only whatever, 667 or whatever it is, right? You say, I'm nowhere near 2000 degrees per second. Bear in mind that you may still incidentally exceed 2000 degrees per second for a very short period of time. When a quadcopter does flips and rolls, it's normal to see it accelerate rapidly and then decelerate slightly at the very beginning of the roll. So that initial push into the move may exceed 2000 degrees per second. I'm trying to find an example, but I'm not really finding one. It may, it may exceed that rate, even though your, your, your targeted rate is not there. So just because you look here and your number is nowhere, is not at 2000, doesn't mean you're necessarily not gonna trigger this protection. And that is going to do it. That is yaw spin to the moon protection, or they call it gyro overflow detection in Betaflight. And, and if you ever, it was a real freaking mystery to me. I had to go ask the devs. I really had no idea what could cause the motors to stop and the pits to go to zero like this. And I would never have figured it out, except that I asked. And now I know, and now you know, and uh, that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.